What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Tech Studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad? Well, that is what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back. My name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator and today we are talking all about the Tech Studio in Affinity Designer. We've been systematically working our way through each of the studios in Affinity Designer on the iPad. So if you're interested in learning more about all of the studios and the tools, go ahead and check out that playlist right here. There's a lot going on in the text studio, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Designer on the iPad. And as you can see, I've already placed two types of text on this artboard. One is just a placeholder that says text, and that is artistic text. So if you remember, there are two tools under the text tool in the left-hand side. So you might remember this from our video on the text tool, but there is art text and frame text. So I've placed both. The one that says text is artistic text. So when I am using my move tool, I can go ahead and I can adjust that size like that. The other one is frame text. When I tap on it, if I adjust it, it will actually adjust the frame. So some of this text will actually get cut off or the paragraphs will change. So those are just the two types of text and that's just good to review before we go ahead and learn about the text studio. So in order to open up the text studio, we're going to go over to our right hand side of our screen and go down to where the little A is. That is the symbol for the text studio. But before we open it, I just wanna show you kind of a cool thing here, which is that you can swipe up or down on that studio to change your text size. So if we swipe up, the text gets bigger. If we swipe down, the text gets smaller. And that is very similar to what we can do on the Stroke Studio where we can just swipe up or down to change the size of a stroke on an object. So let's go ahead and open it by tapping the A. And here you can see the Text Studio. And right up at the top, as we often do, we have a little menu. And if you tap that, you're just going to see there's only one option. And the option is check spelling while typing. Now, this is basically just a spell check. So if you want to turn off the spell check, like we might want to do if we're working with a lot of placeholder text, then you can just check it. So the text that I have here is just lorem ipsum placeholder text that I've copied in as an example. And we can take off this spell checking just by tapping the little checkbox. And then it doesn't show those red lines everywhere. Now, of course, you might want this on if you are actually typing out words and you want to make sure that you don't accidentally misspell something. So you can turn that on or off as you desire. Of course, the little push pin, just like always, just pins this up so that it won't disappear, which can be useful if you're doing a lot of work with text. And then we go right below that where we have the option to change our typeface. So currently we're in Arial. And I'm going to switch over to my larger headline text here, just so you can see how typefaces change. So if you tap the little drop down, you will see a list of typefaces, or in this case, they are calling them fonts. I don't want to get into a big discussion about typefaces versus fonts here. It doesn't really matter all that much, but they're calling them fonts. And you can go ahead and you can select from any font or typeface that you have installed on your iPad. If you're interested in learning more about installing fonts on the iPad, go ahead, drop in the comments. Let me know if you'd like a video on that in the future. So you'll see that first you have a list of recent. So anything that you've used recently will be right there. And that's good if you are using, you know, a couple of fonts in the design and you just need to keep reusing them. It's good to have that little recent list there. And then below Below that is just an alphabetical list of every font that you have installed. So let's scroll back up here and let's just choose one from our recent list just to see how this works. If we tap on humble rough all caps, you can see that the text that we have selected is going to change. So that's pretty simple. The other thing that you might notice are these little drop down menus next to some of them. So if I open up this one next to American typewriter, you can see that there are different styles of that typeface. So there's light, condensed light, regular, condensed, semi bold, bold, condensed, bold. So some typefaces will have a lot of different types within it and some will have none like this humble rough all caps that doesn't have any other options that's just all there is but the drop down menu will let you see what's available to you so that's obviously very important and then the next option we have on the left here is just going to be the size of the font so if we tap on that we can go ahead and change it using the calculator interface so say i wanted to bring this to 200 just type that in and click ok and then the text goes to 200 i might then have to reposition it of course but that's how you would change that. And then right here where it says regular currently, that's where the traits are. So let me go ahead and select a different typeface so that you can see this one with more traits. So I'll go ahead and do typewriter. And then if we come here with more traits, you can see all of those traits are listed here. That's just like a quick way to get to them if you're switching back and forth. But it's the same list as you had before. And you can also see that there are two options down here. Let me switch to Arial so you can see both of them. And that is bold and italics. And this really only shows up if there is a bold and italics version of that typeface on your iPad. These options will be grayed out if those don't exist. It will not just take any font and try and make it bigger or try and make it more slanty. 
It only does it with fonts that actually have it. So right next to those options is the color dot. And if you hit that, you can see that this looks just like the normal color interface. So if we go ahead and we select another color, the color of the text will change. And this is exactly the same as if we change the color from the color studio. It's just here to make it more convenient for us. And if we tap where it says color wheel, we can of course change to other color modes as well. And we even get the eyedropper tool, which is super useful to have. So moving on down, you can see that we have options for underlining and strike through. And you can do either no underline and no strike through, which is the default option, or you can do one, or you can do two. So you can see I can do a double underline or one underline or no underline, the same with strike through. And you can see there are colored dots next to those as well. So you can actually change the color of the underline or the strike through. And that's how you can handle kind of the decoration on text. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tap on my filler text here so that we can see how the alignment and justification options work. So currently it's left aligned, but we can also do center alignment and we can also do right alignment. So those are pretty standard in what you might expect. Below them are again, left, center and right plus full justification but all of these bottom ones are fully justified except for the last line in a paragraph. So if I go left, you can see that it is pushing it all the way out. So this is what you might use if you are doing something in columns like a newspaper or a magazine. That's where you would use these. And of course, if you fully justify it, you will start getting things that are kind of weird. So most of the time, you're probably going to leave this in one of the top three, but if you're doing newspaper or magazine stuff, you'll have those options down there. Speaking of newspaper and magazine stuff, the rest of the menu here goes into sub menu. So there's a character list and a paragraph list with a positioning menu and a typography menu for characters and spacing justification and tab stop menus for the paragraph. Now these are not character styles or paragraph styles. They just let you go in and control the different attributes that are involved in the characters or the paragraphs. Now I'm not going to go into all of these because most people aren't going to use them. They're a little bit complicated and you can't save them as a style. So I don't find them to be all that useful. I really think that the most useful part of the text studio is that top part where it's kind of the basic basic options. Once we get down into these options here where things get a little bit more complicated, we would really be better off being an Affinity Publisher because Affinity Designer has just not been made to handle text super, super well because that's kind of the area that Affinity Publisher is in. However, Affinity Publisher has not been released on the iPad yet. And so that is where we run into some trouble here. And I've always said that Affinity Designer's weakest area was text and that they really need to improve its text handling, especially on the iPad. So I really would like to see them either bring Affinity publisher to the iPad, which we've been waiting on for a couple years, or go ahead and bring some better advanced text options into a fan designer like paragraph styles and character styles. Because right here, we would just be adjusting this block of text, we couldn't make it into a style that could be applied elsewhere. So like I said, I'm not going to go into each one of those. The best thing you can probably do if you need them is just go look for what you're looking for. Like if you are looking to kern something, just click on it until you find something that says kerning. And if you don't know what kerning is, don't worry about it. You probably don't need these features right now. This would really be if you are working on books, magazines, newspapers, some kind of print publication layout, in which case you probably are better off switching over to a computer and using Affinity Publisher. And that's going to wrap up the text studio for us. Okay, I hope you found learning more about the Tech Studio to be helpful today. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those down in the comments. And don't forget to check out the playlist with all the other videos about the studios and tools in Affinity Designer. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.